It blows my mind that Scorsese was working on this movie when he was doing The Irishman. Bonkers. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Killers of the Flower Moon. For those of you who keep an eye on Martin Scorsese's IMDb, this has been on there for quite a long time. I feel this is a better experiment than that of what The Irishman was. The Irishman was something we had all been waiting for for quite a long time, and it also basically just had the holy trio again. But I did find that The Irishman didn't have as much punch to it as I would have hoped, and also there were some silly bits. You all know the part I'm talking about. <laughs> Powers of a Broken Moon is such a great story told from a villain, from an antagonistic perspective, that you can't help but be thoroughly intrigued. The film follows the Native American band who were pushed out of their territory over and over and over again by Western and, and, and American expansion to the point where they were taken to this area that was considered completely barren and useless and they discovered oil and they then became some of the most rich people in the world and the local community could not stand to have natives be richer than they were and eventually this plan to usurp them through marriage through murder through espionage through cutthroat literal cutthroat tactics to take the very riches, the very splendor, the very success that the people had gained for themselves despite being put into this scenario and how almost nothing was done about it. Now there's a lot of going back and forth about the representation of this movie and about how they feel that it wasn't done in the proper way. It should have been a lot more from Lily Gladstone's character. The problem is, if you look up the notes about the book, the book is kind of told from a whodunit perspective. It would have been slightly kind of disingenuous, and if anything, disrespectful to kind of take it like that. From the very onset, you know who the villains are. You know who the people to not trust are. One of the best parts about the trailer that immediately made me want to watch this movie, that part where all of the people are in that room in the dark and they all turn to look at the camera, Leonardo says in the background, can you spot the wolves in this picture? That is the basis of this movie. That is what this is about. Robert De Niro gives one of the best subtle villain performances I think he's ever done. I feel that this is what Joe Pesci was trying to do in The Irishman, but De Niro does it to where you know what he's doing is evil, you know what he's doing is for the betterment of himself, but he's able to almost trick you into forgetting what he's done. You're almost pulled into his veil, his web of shadow that he casts upon the entire community. He knew how to speak the language. He became friends with the chiefs. He was trusted by them and he used that trust to kill them. And Leo is his instrument because Leo plays a real dumbass in this movie. It is a cool turn to see him play such a stupid character. It's his involvement, his kind of following without means to an end that helped bring about the chaos, but he does slowly start to see the monstrosity that he's created, and it's because of his wife, who's played by Lily Gladstone, who, by the way, is phenomenal. She is one of the best parts of this movie. She's definitely got to be nominated for Best Actress. As far as I'm concerned, she's a contender because she's the heart of this movie. Some people were a little bit upset that what she wasn't in it as much as they wanted her to be but her character her person the actual person she's based on was sick for a good portion of it and there's a good reason as to why as why i like the relationship between leo and lily because it's destructive it's, it makes you mad but you also see the care there's so many multifaceted aspects to this movie that it's not just good guy bad guy there are layers on layers on layers in terms of the storytelling in terms of the characters 
in terms of their means to an end. And then they also just the representation in the film with the colors, the cinematography, the music, everything is so well put together. And it amazes me that he's able to make these three and a half long hour bangers. And I have to say too, the pacing for this is great. If I were to have a choice between two and three and a half hour long Scorsese movies, it was The Irishman or Killers of a Flower Moon, I would choose Killers. Both were expertly edited by my favorite uh, film editor in the business, Thelma Schoonmaker. She's been editing for Scorsese for forever, but she nails it even more than she already has done. Is the pacing as quick as Wolf of Wall Street? No, that movie's got probably some of the best pacing I've ever seen, but it's close. It's not as quick and spunky as Wolf of Wall Street, but it's much more condensed. It's much more tragic. It's much more fruitful for what it is trying to tell, what the story it's trying to tell. The length might just be the thing that does kill a few people. Like, I mean, you're not gonna pop this on. It's, it's long, it's a long fucking movie, but it feels warranted. Like there's nothing you could cut. There's probably even more that was probably originally filmed for this, but they couldn't put it in. Overall, Killers of a Flower Moon is worth the hype. If you're not a fan of big, long movies, I understand, you probably won't enjoy this. But I do believe that this film has the excellence I was expecting from The Irishman, and it surprised me on that fact. I think that the acting is top-notch. The story is top-notch. All the way from beginning to its very sorrowful ending. The cinematography, the editing, the music, all of it. Just gold. And that's why I'm going to give Killers of the Flower Moon a 7 out of 7. I gave two of those this year. Both of them, surprisingly enough, are historical dramas. Well, those are my thoughts about this movie. Very curious to see what you guys have to say. Let me know in the comments below. Did you enjoy it? In comparison to The Irishman or this movie, which, which would you prefer? Hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. Until then, see you guys next time.